Hey everybody, it's thunder in the morning in the desert. Well, I just thought I'd do a video and comment uh, like I do sometimes on world affairs. War, 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 rumors of war, uh, all out war, World War III, war, 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 war. That's what we're at right now. And I think we are basically in a world war right now. I don't know whether you want to call it World War III or just uh, World at War. And I don't think I've seen a time in my life where I keep saying it's uh, dicey at times and critical and critical mass and all of the above. But I've been noticing lately that there's been a lot of rhetoric um, heated up uh, face-offs, okay, you might say, between Russia and the USA. What else is new? Uh, here we go with the Syrian thing that's been going on for what? Years and years and years and uh, taken at least 300,000 lives, innocent lives. And we got we got a uh, we got it ramping up to about as far as you can ramp up something without it getting into all out uh, into an all out slugfest. I watch things closely, and uh, you know I have an intel base. Uh, the Campfire Council has an intel base called the Crazy Horse Society, and we watch all this stuff real, real friggin' close from the front lines, from all over the place. We, we, we disseminate uh, to others uh, the truth. And the truth is right now is that um, we're at war. There's no other way to look at it. Uh, it's in the Middle East, it's in Syria, and uh, there's a uh, there's troops being commanded, okay, by uh, the USA, and the troops that they're commanding are proxy troops or the uh, quote unquote moderate rebels, which are not moderate at all, but it consist of all kinds of rebels. In fact, all of the rebels are used by the USA to try to weaken and overthrow the government of Syria and uh, their president, Assad. Aleppo is a key area right now, and if you, if you, uh, if you study strategy and if you're into Sun Tzu's Art of War and Musashi's Book of Five Rings and all that good shit, then you see what's happening. It's a major, major... Uh, tactical situation right now and it all sprung off this latest thing where they had a ceasefire between the US and Russia and uh, the ceasefire got blown out of the water because uh, basically the USA went in and attacked uh, Syrian forces in a malicious and uh, sadistic manner and I'd say using a A-10 Warthog with the 50 cal machine gun, uh, machine guns on the front uh, that can make hamburger out of anybody going in low level and taking out some of Assad's people and letting ISIS uh, move into a certain location. Well, that blew the whole thing. And they said it was a mistake. It wasn't. There's tapes where they're interacting with ground forces, the, re the, the rebels. Well, that led to a ramping up, uh, you know, Russia taking, uh, taking the USA to the UN and then the UN coming off with their uh, super bitch, Samantha Powers, and uh, calling Russia every name in the books. It's ramping up. The, the rhetoric's ramping up. The, the facade on the peace process is breaking down because there really was no peace process. It was all a stall tactic by the U.S. to uh, rearm and reinforce rebel groups so that they could keep the city of Aleppo because the Aleppo is a main tactical point 
in Assad keeping his uh, country intact and his regime intact. And uh, you have to look at all the considerations and uh, everything to see where this is going. Now, if you look at the big picture, if you look at the big picture, and you consider Sun Tzu's art of war and battle tactics and strategy, you can see that there's not too much wiggle room here, uh, people. Um, and I'm sure Russia is aware of the fact one of the precepts of Sun Tzu's art of war is uh, prolonged campaigns prolonged campaigns will weaken the state and they've been in this quite a while now over a year I think uh, pretty close maybe longer I don't know I lose track of time but uh, Russia has been in there kicking ass on the uh, ISIS trying to trying to uh, regain ground for Syria in an alliance with Iran and in alliance with the Syrian forces the good guys okay they've taken a lot of heat for this and they've taken a lot of propaganda so I'm talking about Syria and Russia a lot of lies have been uh, slung their way about everything that you can think of everything is their fault nothing is the USA's fault but that's just diametrically wrong it's 180 the other way it's everything's USA's fault by going into a sovereign sovereign country in the Middle East and trying to take over so they can get to the pipelines and the oil so that they can save the petrodollar from collapsing and it's not working out for them and they're getting um, they're getting to the point where they're panicking now it's like a wild animal backed into a corner so right now there's a huge battle in Aleppo going on and it looks like uh, basically Russia and Syria are doing a mop-up operation and uh, basically just about ready to take uh, full full ground wipe out all the the rebels the so quote, quote rebels or drive them out so they did a three-prong attack which looks looked like it was a for sure thing but lo and behold the USA the dumb assholes that they are cannot uh, let go of something that is completely lost they can't let go so they do a very very dangerous thing and move some troops into uh, near Aleppo today okay just blatantly move some troops in there uh, what are troops what are American troops doing uninvited in a, a sovereign country that they have no business in what are we doing there to back up the rebels that's what we're doing there to back up the so-called quote unquote moderate rebel rebels which to this day they cannot name who they are they can't name who the moderate rebels are and they can't control the moderate rebels but it's all a sham because they're all the same there is no moderate rebels. It's all terrorist factions, a mercenary army supported by the USA. And now here tell they're sending them man pads. Man pads are shoulder fired missiles that can take down an, uh, you know, a, a jet airliner or a jet aircraft. Sophisticated stuff. this is war people this is all-out war Russia and uh, America USA are at war right now and the bad guys are the USA sorry to say it because they're greedy uh, vicious motherfuckers they can't keep their hands off other people's uh, territory and uh, property and uh, resources 
And it's been the same old thing all the way through in Libya, in Iraq, in Iran, in uh, Afghanistan. General Wesley Clark even admitted years ago that that was the agenda of the New World Order or the uh, West or NATO is to take down every freaking country they can in the Middle East. But somebody stood in the way, okay? And that happened uh, when they first were accusing Syria of making a, a chemical gas attack, which they didn't do and was proven they didn't do. And Russia came in and negotiated a settlement with that and uh, kept Obama from firing missiles in there. And then from that day on, the neocons and the Pentagon and the Warhawks got really pissed off because they felt Obama made a wrong move. He should have gone in with all-out war right then. Well, he didn't, and uh, Russia took advantage of it, and they moved everything in there overnight to fight the quote-unquote big bad terrorist again, which are created by our government, the USA. Aren't you just proud of the USA, people? Fomenting war around the globe, trying to take over all kinds of uh, countries, putting... Uh, using NATO to put uh, nuclear warheads on the border of Russia and all around Russia, and uh, at the same time provoking China and North Korea. I would say in the next couple of months here, uh, probably the next couple of weeks, even the next few days, I think I, I I think things are going to go south. I'll go out on a limb and say that uh, I've kind of gone out on limbs before, but it doesn't feel good to me right now, people. It feels like uh, it feels like a cloud just came over the window here. <laughs> um. It is nice in the desert today, by the way. We got clouds all over the place. A little bit of rain last night. It's cooling down. The temperatures are cooling down. Man, I wish the global community would cool down. Also, we got another thing coming up uh, here real soon, like tomorrow. Supposedly, there's been some predictions or some rumors that there's going to be some kind of huge monetary shift tomorrow. I don't know if that's true. I'll take a wait and see attitude, but it, it, it would seem like that it would be coinciding with other events that are happening right now, kind of like a perfect storm type thing. There's rumors that uh, the monetary, uh, the dollar could, there could be a big shift in a currency situation uh, on a global level. Now, whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. But some people have put their butts on the line and said it's going to happen tomorrow for sure, September 30th. So whatever the case, though, here, uh, you know, with the war situation in um, Syria and uh, other, other events being ramped up, of course, this is a... a uh, this is an election year, and I know we're coming up to the election month, and we're coming down to the nitty-gritty with that. Like that's a big nitty-gritty or something. That's already decided, probably. The plans are in motion for how that's going to play out. Who's going to be in office or who's not going to be in office or uh, if there might be a postponement of the elections. That's a rumor. Seems like, though, there's a lot of stuff coming up all at once here uh, with the intel that I have and, uh, you know, as I watch the world stage. And again, I'm a strategist. I'm into the game of Go. I'm into chess. I'm into uh, military tactics and watching things play out. And basically, you know, where we're at right now, 
Um, I'm watching things play out on the world stage, and I'm seeing that uh, if there was just one little mishap right now, one little mistake, one little uh, miscalculation, let's say by the West, that's where I think it would come from. Uh, if there's one little slip up where we uh, take somebody out that we shouldn't, like maybe some Russian people or one of their airplanes or uh, something of that nature, that could trigger an all-out uh, holocaust an all-out uh, nuclear strike against uh, nation against nation. Just depending on whether cooler heads would prevail. But it's getting to the point where they're, uh, it's, it's like, you know, when you're on the battlefield, uh, you can either be at a distance firing salvos across the borders into a certain area or you can be face to face, eyeball to eyeball in hand to hand combat. Uh, it doesn't look good right now. I don't know. We'll just, uh, you know, hold on to our lug nuts here and see what the fuck happens. But um, where was I with the strategy thing? Sun Tzu, where was I? I lost my whole train of thought now. Now it's still there. So. I think I was talking uh, about the financial situation, the, uh, it, and that would be called an SDR currency, <clears throat> New World Order type currency, global thing, big shift, uh, in, uh, you know, coinciding with all this shit we got going down. If you just look at the energy involved, just the energy and the intensity, and the fact that, again, I think that Russia is very aware of Sun Tzu's Art of War uh, strategy about prolonged campaigns, and they learned before when they went to Afghanistan in a prolonged campaign, and then the USA again came in and challenged them and used rebel groups. That's where Al Qaeda was created and Osama bin Laden was created and he was actually on the American side at that time and they created Al Qaeda or they funded Al Qaeda. Just a little history here to fight the Russians in Afghanistan and the Russians had to back out. That was uh, something they learned. Of. They learned a lesson the hard way. They learned not to commit all their resources, not to trust the USA, uh, watch out for rebels backed by the USA. And they did the same thing back then when I think about it. They supplied rebels with uh, shoulder-fired Stinger missiles, which they're doing now again. They're doing the same thing. It's like history repeating itself, only this time It's not going to be a, a, a matter of if Russia is going to withdraw and back down and uh, play uh, possum or uh, run away with their tail between their legs because they become a super strong military force in alliance with uh, China and Iran. So you can, uh, you can look look for this outcome to be different than the one in Afghanistan. You you can look for this outcome to be different and by being different means they're not going to take a loss here. Okay. But I think that their eyes were open when they uh, Incidentally, when, uh, when the USA recently attacked, uh, when I was talking f before about how they attacked the Syrian army and helped the rebels after the ceasefire, immediately Russia went in and took out an operations, a joint operations center that had not only Israeli commanders, but uh, this isn't on the news, people. You won't see it on the news. Russia struck back immediately in about a fifth of a second and took out all kinds of uh, Israeli and uh, Turkish and American uh, 
commanders that were in an operation center near Aleppo commanding the uh, forces, the rebel forces. They took them out. They vaporized them. They shot up a couple of rockets off their uh, boats, their ships. So that's what I mean when I say we're at a hair trigger thing here. It's a tit for tat thing. People are taking each other out. It's, it's really a war, a proxy war, but it's not a proxy war. Because the, 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 US, the USA's uh, uh, soldiers are mercenaries, per, paid mercenaries. They're still soldiers for the USA. It's still the USA that's doing it. Russia knows it. So they're fighting the USA through these uh, forces, but it's really uh, Russia against the USA, period, end of story. The only thing that can, we're, uh, the only place it can go now is um, it becoming blatantly obvious and uh, that uh, this latest move of putting uh, the USA, some USA forces on the ground near Aleppo uh, smacks to me of uh, it being uh, becoming blatant now and uh, some kind of mistake taking place where let's say Russia goes in and uh, takes out a bunch of uh, Americans because they got in the way and they will they will or another scenario could be Russia just declares a no-fly zone which they kind of could do at any minute because they have the S-400 missile systems that can uh, be ramped up and fired and uh, those things can take a football out of the sky at uh, 30,000 feet. <laughs> um, so we're, we're, we're basically in war here and uh, we're in a financial situation here. Uh, that nobody wants to talk about that uh, is only uh, available on our alternative media. There's a bunch of stuff going on and Thunder's just feeling like you should know and uh, you should know how uh, close to the flame we're getting, close to the fire we're getting here. Um, so that if you wanted to prepare yourself in any kind of way that you could. Um, <clears throat> will this all play out uh, like I think? Well, I think one thing is that uh, I don't see how it can get better. I mean, it's all, it would be almost have to be a miraculous thing for the world stage to get better. Too many moves have been made and uh, too, man, too much face uh, Saving face is a big thing with especially the West. Any any power, but... And then, you know, the thing that makes it even more critical right now is the transition from uh, that's happening in the U.S. on the political stage, in the elections. That even makes things more dicey and more... Uh, uh, let's put it this way, uh, unforeseen okay adds an unforeseen element in here uh, because there's all kinds of uh, major power plays going on not only in this country but from other countries to this country and uh, I'll tell you one thing right now though everything that is happening everything I'm talking about everything in this country that's happening that is not in line with what they want is being blamed on Russia from everything from the elections uh, to cyber warfare to warfare in it's all bl being blamed on Russia it's all Russia's fault so you can see by just that notion there that they're uh, setting up uh, Russia to be the, the major bad guy for anything that goes wrong here. I wanted to comment on some other, uh, another thing that's happening in this war right now. Sun Tzu's Art of War says that the general or the uh, country or the commander that, ha is, uh, that holds the moral high ground, okay, 
is ultimately going to be the winner in any battle because the moral high ground is always favored by the people. But in Russia definitely has the moral high ground as far as wanting peace and wanting to avoid, avoid uh, countries being overthrown. They have the moral high ground. Whether you like them or not, they have the moral high ground. But there's a propaganda war going on that is uh, so vicious against Russia that they're trying to make the people believe that they don't have the moral high ground. So there's a war on that level too. There's the war on the level of the moral high ground and how it's perceived by the people and that uh, in itself can end wars but they don't want the war ended. That's what ended the Vietnam War is because uh, the people in the United States uh, woke up and decided that they uh, wanted to take the moral high ground. They didn't like the killing there. That's what ended the Vietnam War because of uh, the choice of the moral high ground by the people. But if the people don't know where the moral high ground is, which is what the propaganda, vicious propaganda machines in uh, the West are doing right now. Full court press on uh, propaganda lies and disinfo. Trying to make somebody look out to be a bad guy and not have the moral high ground. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. It's going to be interesting to see if, uh, you know what, the whole thing's interesting to me from a strategic point of view. And you know what, it's so dicey right now and we could be vaporized at any moment. But the best way to, to keep your sanity is to look at this whole thing as a stratagem or a game. At least you can be entertained about uh, the moves that people are making and where they're going. And that's how you have to look at it. Life is a game. Life is a war. So you just have to chill out and uh, like Thunder is here and just watch the whole thing go down. Warn people? Sure, I can warn people. I can say get prepared. But you better be prepared mentally and spiritually and physically anyway for whatever eventuality arises, especially on a spiritual level. But I'm just kicking back right now, enjoying, uh, because I am into strategy and I am into all that whole thing, I'm just enjoying watching what these fools are doing and wondering where it's all going to go. And, and uh, Looking at Sun Tzu's Art of War, which is the greatest uh, book of uh, war strategy uh, bar none, and comparing it with the moves that I see are being made by uh, the nations here. And I will say that uh, it, it, uh, it's a complicated uh, situation because there's so many players, so many actors, so many commanders so many uh, troops that uh, the situation is so uh, fluid, okay? It's so fluid, it's juicy. How's that? It's juicy. Um, and when it's that fluid, uh, when things are that fluid, then you never know where it's going to go. You never know uh, how you know, which direction it's going to take. But you can see a preponderance of evidence, okay, you can see a preponderance of it going a certain way. So the clouds of war and this uh, storm is forming people and uh, there is something in the wind. And I guess I just did my best to uh, try to convey that to you. Um, so keep your heads up and uh, your ears open to the listen to the wind. You know, it there's there's uh, there's something in the wind right now. Okay. 
I'll leave it there for now. I'm Thunder Adios.